Good morning. Today we are reading April 18th, 2022. We're going to be reading Joshua 10, 1 through 11, 15. Luke 13, 1 through 21. Psalm 71, 1 through 6. Revelation 3 and Psalm 91. Then the men of Gibeon sent word to Joshua at the tents at Gilgal, saying, Do not leave your servants alone. Hurry and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites who live in the hill country have gathered against us. Joshua 10, 6. Though the Gibeonites had tricked Joshua into making peace with them, the Israelite leader held to his promise and went to the Gibeonites' aid when the Amorites attack them. Sometimes, like Joshua, we make imperfect promises. Will we faithfully fulfill them? Let's remember, God heard our words and holds us accountable. What are your top three priorities for today? What are your reflections on our Bible reading after we read our Bible? What's on your schedule and to-do list today? Write it down so you don't forget. Um, what do you want to remember from today, April 18th, 2022? Um, how are you doing on your water drinking, your healthy eating, your exercise, your rest and sleep? And I challenge you to seek peace. Just realize this dress has like glittery fibers in it. <laughs> Isn't that funny how we're like, mm, glitter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start off with our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today with humble hearts and humble minds. We ask that you permeate this time with you. Holy Spirit, we invite you in to do what only you can do. Guide us, bless us, be with our loved ones wherever they may be. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your son who died on the cross for our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's start with Joshua 10. 1 through eleven fifteen. Now Adani Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard that Joshua had taken Ai and totally destroyed it, doing to Ai and its kings as he had done to Jericho and its king, and that the people of Gibeon had made a treaty of peace with Israel and were living near them. He and his people were very much alarmed at this because Gibeon was an important city, like one of the royal cities. It was larger than Ai, and all its men were good fighters. So Adani Zedek, king of, Is of Jerusalem, appealed to Hoham, king of Hebron, Puram, king of Jaramuth, Japhia, king of Lashish, Lashish and Deber, king of Eglon, come up and help me attack Gibeon, he said, because it has made... Peace with Joshua and the Israelites. Have they not heard anything yet? Then the five kings of Amorites, the kings of Jer Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth. I should have asked for a pronunciation help today. Lashish and Eglon joined forces. They moved up with all their troops and took up positions against Gibeon and attacked it. The Gibeonites then sent word to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal, Do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us. Help us, because all the Amorite kings from the hill country have joined forces against us. So Joshua marched up from Gilgal with his entire army, including all the best fighting men. The Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. 
Not one of them will be able to withstand you. After an all-night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. The Lord threw them into confusion before Israel, who defeated them in a great victory at the Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road going up to Beth Haran and cut them down all the way to Azekah and Makeda. As they fled before Israel on the road down from Beth Horon to Azekah, the Lord hurled large hailstones down on them from the sky, and more of them died from the hailstones than were killed by the swords of the Israelites. On the day the Lord gave Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, O sun, stand still over Gibeon, O moon, over the valley of Ahalan. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nation avenged itself on its enemies. As it is written in the book of Jeshar, the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. Then there has never been a day like it before or since. A day when the Lord listened to a man. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Then Joshua returned with all Israel to the camp of Gilgal. Now the five kings had fled and hidden in the cave of Makeda. <laughs> when Joshua was told that the five kings had been found hiding in the cave of Makeda, he said, roll large rocks up to the mouth of the cave and post some men there to guard it. But don't stop. Pursue your enemy, attack them from the rear, and don't let them reach their cities. For the Lord your God has given them into your hand. So Joshua and the Israelites destroyed them completely, almost to a man. But the few who were left reached their fortified cities. The whole army then returned safely. So Joshua and the Israelites destroyed them completely almost to a man, but the few who were left reached their fortified cities. The whole army then returned safely to Joshua in the camp of Makeda, and no one uttered a word against the Israelites. Joshua said, open the mouth of the cave and bring those five kings out to me. So they brought the five kings out of the cave. The kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth, Lashish and Eglon, when they had brought these kings to Joshua, he summoned all the men of Israel and said to the army commanders who had come with him, come here and put your foot on the necks of these kings. So that they, so they came forward and placed their feet on their necks. Joshua said to them, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Be strong and courageous. This is what the Lord will do to all the enemies you are going to fight. Then Joshua struck and killed the kings and hung them on five trees, and they were left hanging on the trees until evening. At sunset, Joshua gave the order, and they took them down from the trees. and threw them into the cave where they had been hiding. At the mouth of the cave, they placed large rocks, which are there to this day. That day, Joshua took Mechada. He put the city and its king to the sword and totally destroyed everyone in it. He left no survivors. And he did to the kings, the king of Mechada, as he had done to the king of Jericho. Then Joshua and all Israel will, with him, moved on from Mecca to Libna and attacked it. The Lord also gave that city and its kings into Israel's hand. The city and everyone in it, Joshua put the sword, put to the sword. He left no survivors there, and he did to its king as he had done to the king of Jericho. Then Joshua and all of all Israel with him moved on from Libna to Lashish. He took up positions against it and attacked it. The Lord handed Lashish over to Israel and Joshua took it on the second day. The city and everyone in it he put to the sword, just as he had done to Libna.
Meanwhile, Horam, king of Gezer, had come up to help Lashish, but Joshua defeated him and his army until no survivors were left. Then Joshua and all Israel with him moved on from Lashish to Eglon. They took up positions against it and attacked it. They captured it the same day and put it to the sword and totally destroyed everyone in it, just as they had done to Lashish. Then Joshua and all Israel with him went up from Eglon to Hebron and, at, and attacked it. They took the city and put it to the sword together with its king, its villages, and everyone in it. They left no survivors. Just as at Eglon, they totally destroyed it and everyone in it. Then Joshua and all Israel with him turned around and attacked Deborah. They took the city, its king, and its villages and put them to the sword Everyone in it, they totally destroyed. They left no survivors. They took to Deborah and its king as they had done to Libna and its king and to Hebron. So Joshua subdued the whole region, including the hill country, the Negev, the western foothills, and the mountain slopes. Together with all their kings, he left no survivors. He totally destroyed all who breathed, just as the Lord, the God of Israel, had commanded. Joshua subdued them from Kadesh Barnea to Gaza and from the whole region of Goshen to Gibeon. All these kings and their lands Joshua conquered in one campaign because the Lord, the God of Israel, fought for Israel. Then Joshua turned with all Israel to the camp of Gilgal. Chapter 11. When Jabin, king of Hazar, heard of this, he sent word to Jobab, king of Madon, to the kings of Shimron and Ashath, and to the northern kings who were in the mountains in the Arabah, south of Kinnereth, in the western foothills, and in Naphath, Dor, on the west, to the Canaanites in the east and west, to the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites in the hill country, and to the Hivites below Hermon in the region of Mizpah. They came out with all their troops and a large number of horses and chariots, a huge army as numerous as, as the sand on the seashore. All these kings joined forces and made camp together at the waters of Miram to fight against Israel. The Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them because by this time tomorrow, I will hand all of them over to Israel slain. You are to hamstring their horses and burn their chariots. So Joshua and his whole army came against them suddenly at the waters of Miram and attacked them. And the Lord gave them into the hand of Israel. They defeated them and pursued them all the way to greater Sidon, to Mizraphoth, Maim, and to the valley of Mizpah on the east, until no sur survivors were left. Joshua did to them as the Lord had directed. He hamstrung their horses and burned their chariots. At that time, Joshua turned back and captured Hazor, Hazor and put its king to the sword. Hazor had been the head of all these kingdoms. Everyone in it put to the sword. They totally destroyed them, not sparing anything that breathed, and he burned up Hazor itself. Joshua took all these cities and their kings and put them to the sword. He totally destroyed them as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded. Yet Israel did not burn any of the cities built on their mounds except Hazor, which Joshua burned. The Israelites carried off for themselves all the plunder and livestock of these cities. <clears throat> but all the people they put to the sword until they completely destroyed them, not sparing anyone that breathed. As the Lord commanded his servant Moses, so Moses commanded Joshua and Joshua did it. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. Amen. Now we're going to move on to Luke 13, 1 through 21. Right there. 
Now, there were some present now, there were some present at the time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than the other living in, others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man, he took care of the vineyard, for three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this tr fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should I use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. <clears throat> Chapter uh, Verse 10. On a Sabbath, Jesus received was teaching in one of the synagogues and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue ruler said to the people, there are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, you hypocrites, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. Then Jesus asked, what is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to? It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air perched it in its branches. Again, he asked, what shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. Amen. Psalm 71, 1-6. Psalm 71, one through six. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Rescue me and deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge to which I can always go. Give the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O oh my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of evil and cruel men. For you have been my hope, O oh sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. From birth, I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will praise you. Amen. <clears throat> Revelation 3. To the angel of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard, obey it and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Yet you have a few people in Sardis 
who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his name before my father and his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church of Philadelphia, write, these are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your seat. I know your deeds. I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the world to test those who live on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. Him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church of Lo. Lodicea, right. These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth. And do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you are a wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, so you become rich and white white clothes to wear, so you can cover your shameful nakedness and solve to put on your eyes so you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my father on this throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. Amen. <clears throat> I do not have time to read the notes today, so I'll have to catch up on that later. Um, Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Amen. 
Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a blessed day and I hope you're a blessing to others. See you tomorrow.